Hi, everyone. I'm Connie Zach again. <laughs> so sorry for the technical difficulties. It just seems like it's the way it is right now um, with this virtual world. So we're back. And for those of you who are just now joining us, uh, we are joined on our Sunlight and our Enlightened with the Sunlight and series by Susan Bratton, who is the intimacy expert to millions and a champion and advocate to all of those who want uh, passionate intimacy in their life and who doesn't. So I can't wait. I have so many questions for you. I want you to share your um, story. I want you to share your, it's just so many different things. So, um, so first let's get started. And if you want to give the, or everybody like a little bit of backstory of, you know, how did you come about this desire to help those, you know, become more connected to intimacy and passion and, and everything that you're all about? Sure. Well, first of all, hi, Connie. <laughs> hi, Susan. Great to see you. And hello, everyone who's watching. I really appreciate you tuning into this. Um, when, you know, I'm a huge champion of sunlight and I have my own sunlight and sauna. I have the impulse. I have the biggest one so yes. I can have potties in the sauna. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm a natural extrovert. So I needed to have the biggest one I possibly could so I could get all my friends in there. And um, I wanted to tell you that I have my impulse. I have this double decker deck at my house and it's a circular deck. Oh, and I beautiful. have my sauna, my sunlight and sauna underneath the bottom deck with a, a, a roof over it. And it looks out, I live in Mill Valley, California, and it looks out over the giant redwoods oh. into a canyon. So I sit in my impulse with my chroma therapy, orange and red lights. And I look at a beautiful view because that the door, the way you've angled mm -hmm. it with the glass door and the glass side mm -hmm. gives me a panoramic view mm -hmm. of my canyon. And I just love being in there. And it's funny because, you know, when, when Vic, uh, the, my contact at Sunlight that I work with on your public relations, when he contacted me and he said, Hey, would you be interested in doing a Sunlight and Enlighten event with Connie? I'm like, oh, yes, I want to. Yay! Because I am a poor methylator. And I want to explain what that is because my issue is so, so common. Apparently, about 60% of our population has difficulties with a, a, a molecular biology process in our body called methylation. And one, what we struggle with is detoxification and absorption of B vitamins. And B vitamins keep your organs running, they give you energy, and they are responsible for so many functions in your body. And so most of us are running around living at a lower capacity because we are poor methylators and we can't move the toxins out of our body. We need help detoxifying. And that's what I use my sunlight and for. That's really, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's great for so many things from weight loss to cardio health, et cetera, et cetera. But for me, I wanted to do an episode about methylation, hormones, and libido because I, I started out 15 years ago, my husband, Tim, who is, we're celebrating 30 years together this year. Wow. Congratulations. And our sex life's never been better. We, 50, almost 20 years ago now, we hit a rocky patch in our marriage and our issue was intimacy. Our intimacy had waned. He wanted it. I didn't. And we, like any Silicon Valley couple thought we can solve this problem. And we started working with a therapist, reading books about sexuality and going to sex workshops. And we learned so much so fast that fixed our relationship that we thought we need to create a company and bring this to the world because not everybody can come to Northern California and go to sex workshops. First of all, it's edgy as heck to do it. And secondly, it's expensive. And third, it's hard to get to. So we started a company called Personal Life Media. 14 years ago this year, uh, we launched the company and we have published passionate lovemaking techniques and bedroom communication skills for many, many years now. I've published 45 books, 35 of them my own and a, a, about a dozen, approximately a dozen other books and programs from experts who I follow who are my mentors. 
And so I have written so many lovemaking techniques. What I like to do is I like to say, I help you transform having sex into making love. My brand is about conscious, heart-connected lovemaking techniques and communications. But about a decade into the business, I realized that I started out with lovemaking techniques and people were doing great with them and they loved them, but they were having trouble communicating with their partners. So I started working on bedroom communication skills. And then I realized there's three legs to the, to the stool of ageless sexuality. <laughs> and the third leg of the stool is sexual health. And what most people think, the first thing people think when their libido begins to drop is, oh, it's my hormones. And yes, in some ways it is your hormones, but it's not just your hormones. There's, there are a few other interesting things about your hormones and about your libido that I'm going to share on this event today with you, because I want you to understand what is really happening versus what you think might be happening, or give you a little bit more color around it so that you can keep your libido high. Because people, our ancestors for hundreds of thousands of years have wanted more libido. The way we feel right now in modern society is not really any different than the way our ancestors felt. We are, we've always wanted more libido because when you have a higher libido, when you have a higher sex drive, when you have desire, you have lust for life, you have energy. And so Sunlighten is a perfect match for my brand of passionate lovemaking because Sunlighten is about giving you energy. And when you have energy, you have energy for intimacy as well. So that's who I am, how I got here, and why I love Sunlighten so much. Wow. <laughs> I hope there's so many people watching because that, like, just <laughs> in itself is so inspiring um, and I just, I would like, and I'm so, I have so many words to say, because I, I applaud you so much for taking what I would call, and, and I mean, you obviously are close to this topic, but I would call, I mean, a really, you know, a tough topic to be so forthright and, and, you know, passionate um, and honest and vulnerable about. And I just think it is, it is just, it's so inspiring to see you talk about, it. you can tell just watching you, you know, speak that you know you're genuine and you really you know believe in everything you learned i have so many different questions but i really want to applaud you um first and foremost for 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 leading this conversation and um and and for 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 helping others you know because so many people i know just they just give up yeah. right i mean i hear it in my circle of friends you know uh, on the weekend they just they're just like well we just don't do that we just don't do that anymore, you know? Um, so, okay, let's back up for a little bit. And you started talking about um, methylation. Yeah. And I, you know, preparing for this, you know, I was doing a lot of reading. Let me tell you, it's very confusing. So yeah. the first thing I would love you to do, if you, because I did read the 60% fact, which is amazing to me, but I still don't really truly understand the importance of it as well as how you how do you know if you are one of those 60 percent yeah. so could you could you help us understand that yes so what i want to do in and and i don't i don't really want people to kind of get twisted up in their lingerie around methylation okay. <laughs> that's a good way of putting it <laughs> that's my little sex work joke <laughs> <laughs> no awesome. tidy whities here. That's not hot. <laughs> well, that's good. I was twisted up in my lingerie. And I'm like, I don't, I kept reading and reading and reading and trying to understand. And I read all the analogies and, and I read the different, the, 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 the fixes, but I still don't really, truly being completely honest, understand um, what I think I need to understand. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, and, and methylation is, it, it, it means methyl donors and it's, you know, atoms and how they transfer and, you know, you don't need to know that level. Let me explain it from this, like, let's do the super simple, dumb, straightforward, here's what you need to know, make it easy for me, please, Susan Bratton, aspect of it. And the first one is that I want to, I'm going to start with, instead of starting with what is methylation, which is kind of like nerdy and geeky and tweaky and who really cares, let's just talk about how you figure it out and how you fix it if you have it and you're one of the 60%, which odds are you are. Um, okay. Really what's going on is that 
a lot of people think that their libido, their sexual desire, their drive for sex and drive for sex is different than desire. So I like to think about a Venn diagram. I'm going to take you on just a, a short little journey into your, dri your drive, your sex drive. If you think about three circles and they're they are uh, concentric and they're interrelated. That's called a Venn diagram. There's libido, there's desire, and there's arousal. Libido, think about that as, as your body, your health. When your, your libido is the other side of the coin of good health. So if you have good health, you have a high libido. Generally, mm -hmm. if you're in poor health, your libido suffers. So libido is how your body feels and is working so that the desire that is natural that naturally resides within us is able to come forward and support us and make us feel that uh, that lust for life that desire for our partner and the desire to be intimate Desire is the mental piece of it. How do I feel about myself? What is my body image? Mm -hmm. How do I feel about my partner? Am I drawn to them? Am I attracted to them? Do I want them? Do I want to be wanted? And do I want someone? And then arousal is the third part. And a lot of people who suffer from low libido suffer from low libido because they don't get the right combination of things that help them get into their arousal and move that up the arousal ladder. And that's because men, and this leads into hormones, that's because men are testosterone dominant and women are estrogen dominant. That's our lead hormone. And testosterone is the horny testo is the horny hormone, and estrogen is the I'm in my head. I'm thinking about a million things. I'm not <laughs> sure I feel safe. I I can't get out of my head and into my body. So the good news is that our more masculine partner, and believe me, I support everyone across the gender spectrum and all expressions of sexuality, but I find talking about the the masculine and feminine hormones to be helpful for everyone. Um, the the, the testosterone partner is kind of the initiator, the leader, not that the female can't lead or initiate, but just generally he's carrying the flame of desire because he wakes up every morning with a testosterone blossom and he's ready to go if he's in good health where she's on a 28 day cycle where she's got a five day window where her desire is the strongest, but she could have desire throughout her cycle, even after menopause. And the interesting thing is that when women hit menopause, in a lot of women's minds, they think, okay, my hormones are dropping. So I'm my, my libido is suffering. When in actual fact, what's happening is that the ratio of testosterone to estrogen, your estrogen's dropping, which means you actually are more testosterone dominant than ever, which is why midlife women are like, take no prisoners, because we're <laughs> just a little bit more in our testosterone in midlife. And, and that's also why when you see male testosterone dropping, you are ending up with grumpy grandpa maybe even with man boobs, because he's got, he doesn't have enough testosterone. Reminds me, I have two free gifts for our watchers, our viewers today. One is toptesto.com, which is all about how you can naturally support and improve your testosterone levels. And it includes information for men and women because testosterone replacement therapy works on all genders. I take testosterone as well as estrogen and progesterone. And um, I did some wonderful things with a number of biohackers and doctors to explain good tests, what you should do, how to do it naturally, and then how to supplement and what the trade-offs are in supplementing testosterone. Because testosterone really does keep you lusty for life and confident. You know, testosterone is the molecule of having balls. <laughs> 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 and so estrogen, <laughs> estrogen is, and um, I have a book 
called ho hormone balancing, where it also has a ton of resources to understand how to balance and support your hormones as you move through midlife and beyond. And that's at hormonebalancingbook.com. If one of the team could put in toptesto.com and hormonebalancingbook.com into the chat window, I'd appreciate it so that people can download those resources because hormones can be very confusing. And here's what I want you to know about why there's a connection between hormones and sunlight and saunas. And that's the next step, which is that your hormones are only a part of what gives you, gives you a strong libido. And the strong libido actually also comes from blood flow. Mm. And that's another thing that saunas do. They help with your cardiovascular system because as we age, not only does our do our hormones de decline and precipitously by our 50s, but our ability to produce a vasodilator called nitric oxide just falls right off a cliff. By the time we're 50, we have half the ability to produce nitric oxide that we did when we were 25. So all that great sex that you were so eager to have at 25 that you're not feeling like you want as much at 50 is often has less to do with your hormones than it does with your ability to send blood flow to your pelvis because, and I have some diagrams. Can I show some diagrams? Yes. Yes. I love great. it. Um, now you're going to see some penises and some vulvas, but they're <laughs> illustrations and they won't hurt you at all. They'll show you what your body looks like. And they're really, really interesting. It. People love my silly little, let me find my good ones here. This is my one I want to show you. I have so many little here we go. So this, of course, is the female vulva. Mm -hmm. I got to get it in the, in the yep, thing. Here. How's there. that? It's there. So this is the female vulva. And so, you know, you've got your outer labia, your inner labia, your clitoral hood, your clitoral glands, the shaft goes up inside. And then over here is the vestibule. And that has where your urine comes out, the urethral exit and the vaginal opening. Uh, it's hard for me to do this backward. I'm know, you're doing a great I'm. job. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what it looks like underneath. If you take off the skin, this is what it looks like underneath. And what this is, is that's the clitoral tip. That's what everybody's talking about. But here is the clitoral shaft. And here are the clitoral legs. And here are the clitoral, well, these are the clitoral arms. These are the clitoral legs. This is the urethral sponge, which some people call the G-spot. And this is the perineal sponge. That's the vaginal opening. And so all of this tissue is erectile tissue. And women have as much erectile tissue in their vulva as men do in their penis. So here's what the penis looks like. I got to get it in the picture here. So you're familiar with what the penis looks like. If you take that away, here's what it looks like inside. These chambers are spongy tissue. So these spongy tissues right here are exactly the same as these spongy tissues right here. We share the same amount of erectile tissue. But what I like to say is, if you think about a banana, you're talking about a male bodied partner, a penis owner, as we sex experts call it. A penis owner has 50% of his erectile tissue sticking out and 50% actually it goes in and down kind of like this down into the prostate area and into the testicular area. So 50% of his is showing, but it's this, these three long tubes and they fill up really fast with blood flow when he gets aroused. And he has something called hemodynamics, which I just am in love with that word. And that's the like, boing, that's <laughs> hemodynamics at work. But for us girls, we have a lot harder time. It takes us longer to get blood flow into all these little nooks and crannies. We got the nooks and we got the crannies. And that means that it takes us a little bit longer to get aroused. And when we have low nitric oxide, our vascular system can't pump the blood flow into our vulva, which means that our vulva doesn't get engorged, which means that it's small and flaccid instead of big 
and engorged. And when it's engorged, it has more surface area that sends more signals to our, our brain that we feel pleasure. Mm -hmm. And the vagina itself is not glandular. It's not, it doesn't have glands. What it does is blood flow comes to the pelvic bowl, seeps through the vaginal mucosa and wets the vagina to lubricate it. So if we have low blood flow, we have low estrogen, we've got, then we've got thinning tissue from low estrogen. We have loss of lubrication from low nitric oxide. We have difficulty getting our vulva engorged. Sex doesn't feel as good. And that is a problem for us. And it all comes from having enough nitric oxide and having a good microbiome that is allowing your body to produce the hormones you can produce with and the neurotransmitters you need for pleasure. So these are the kinds of things that help you have more desire is not just your hormones, but good blood flow. Because we ladies need about 20 minutes of good warm up and arousal to get our blood flowing to our pelvic bowl where our male body partners, it's almost instantaneous, we're a slow burn. And so we have to slow down as we age, support our nitric oxide, support our cardiovascular system. And then if we're one of that 60% of people who are poor methylators, we have to look at that because what we're really talking about here is that when you're a poor methylator, you don't detox well. You don't get the toxins out of your system. And we live in a toxic world. The air we breathe, the water we drink, the food we eat, the things we put on our body, the health and beauty aids, the shampoos, the lotions we put on our body that are absorbed through our skin, the carpets, the rugs, the environments, everything has chemicals that our body takes in. And if we're poor methylators, we're poor detoxers and we can't get them out. And they're endocrine disruptors and they create the problems that, um, that cause us to not have the libido we once had. So by the time you hit 50, it's actually detoxification, hormone support, and blood flow that are the three-legged stool of keeping your libido strong. So now, I, I have a question. Yeah. Um, so back to, so full for two, two kind of housekeeping things as far as the audience. Um, we will get those free gifts. I just want to make sure. Um, so speaking to um, our team, if we can get those those links out for everybody. Um, the testosterone was the first one. And the other Top one was testo, and, testo hormone balancing book. and hormone balancing book. So mm -hmm. we'll get those in the chat. And then I also wanted to invite our listeners. Um, if you have any questions, it can be about anything, but, you know, specifically methylation, libido, intimacy, um, nitric oxide, detoxification anything. I mean, we have like the like best expert here, Susan Bratton. So we will get to your questions. I, I forgot to mention that at the beginning. So we will always make sure that we have time at the end to answer those. So I just wanted to get to that. So my question back to you yeah. um, is back to the methylation because I'm so yeah. fascinated with this. Um, so we know that about 60%, right, um, have poor methylation. My question is, you know, are there any either tests or indicators yes. that would lead you to believe you are in that 60% category? Yes. So there's a couple of different variables. Um, the first one is that you can take genetic tests and you might have a SNP called MTHFR. Okay. And they call it the mother uh -uh mm -hmm. gene because it really wrecks your ability to absorb your B vitamins and to, de to detoxify which is what I have the MTHFR gene. And that's the number one reason I bought a sunlight and sauna. The number one reason was I wanted more support in detoxification because that's what I struggle with. Right. And all my life, and this is another key, all my life, I, I never felt like I got enough B vitamins. Anytime I ever had any tests, I was low in B12. I was low mm -hmm. in my Bs. And it's interesting that vitamin B2, riboflavin, and vitamin B12, which the highest available for people who have 
methylation issues is methylcobalamin. There's multiple cobalamin versions, flavors, if you will. And the methylcobalamin is a methylated B12, which means it's more absorb, more absorbable by people who struggle with methylation issues. So one thing could be that you feel or have noticed that you're chronically low in B vitamins, that you're low in energy, which is something that is the most precious resource in life is having the energy to do all of the things mm -hmm. that you want, including making love. You know, at the end of the day, if you're too tired to make mm -hmm. love, work on your energy mm -hmm. and your desire will your desire will come up. Mm -hmm. So having B vitamin issues is a sign. Um, getting the genetic testing and realizing that you're an MTHFR, genetic allele. And by the way, if you are Latinx, uh, it's even higher in the Hispanic community. So if you have any Latin American uh, ethnicity, it's really recommended that you check for the MTHFR genetic expression. You can go to um, lifeextension.com and for $99, they have, a, it might even be cheaper now. I did it years ago. Uh, they can test for that and they can test for numbers, a number of different genes. Um, I'm not sure if 23andMe gives that to you, but you can just Google uh, MTHFR test and you can find the test that'll let you know whether you are a poor methylator in that way, genetically poor methylator. And then Another thing that's interesting about MTHFR is that if you suffer from anxiety, I, do, I luckily do not, um, but my mother does. And I, I got the allele from her mm -hmm. and my mom has suffered from anxiety her whole life. So one of the expressions of being a poor methylator can be always feeling a little bit anxious about mm -hmm. things. It could be socialized, ang social anxiety, sexual performance anxiety, generalized anxiety disorder. It could be any number of anxieties. Um, so that's just like a little interesting aside that as you begin to learn about your genetic profile, you can learn uh, not only the types of supplements that work best for you, but it literally is that nature nurture thing. Part of it is nature and it's based on our particular genetic physiology. The other thing that is interesting is that when you're a poor methylator, there are, there's an epigenetic impact, which means that your gene expression, many of your genes turn off and on depending on environmental considerations. And the, the people who have these methylation issues often have epigenetic expression issues. So that's another thing. The, another thing that you can look at is your homocysteine levels. If you have high homocysteine, then, and I, I can't get into this in depth because this isn't my problem or area and I'm not a doctor, I'm a sex expert, but I can give you the paths to Google. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I always think it's that's a good start and then you can mm -hmm. figure it out yourself. Um, high homocysteine levels are another indication of poor methylation. And um, what was, there was one more that I wanted to tell you about that was a problem. So it did the epigenetics. No, I think I got a high homocysteine. Um, uh, sometimes there's sensitivity to B vitamins. If you take B vitamins and you feel like you're agitated from them, you definitely want to check for uh, any one of these homocysteine methylation because you could need a non-methylated vitamin B. You could be taking a methylated B vitamin series, and it actually bothers you because you need the non-methyl donor B vitamins. B vitamins are so crucial to so many functions in our body that I, I look at that and I think to myself, B vitamin testing is ground zero in supplementation. You've got to get your vitamin C, you've got to get your vitamin D, and you've got to get your B complex, you've got to get your minerals. Basically, what's in your daily vitamin, your one a day, your mm -hmm. multivitamin, mm -hmm. multi-mineral. You have to understand what kind of B vitamins you need. I have two companies. I have another company called The 20, T-H-E-2-0. And I named the company after Pareto's principle, the 80-20 rule, that 20% 
of 80% of your results come from 20% of your efforts. Mm -hmm. If you just knew which ones they were like, okay, we're having some success. What is it that's creating the success? And the 20 stands for the 20% that gets results. And what I came out with was a vitamin mineral complex that has super high quality methylated B vitamin complex. So it has methyl cobalamin. It has, so that's the methylated B12. And it has also things like TMG, betaine, the B12, the B2. And here's another big one, folic acid versus methyl folate. So about, oh, I think it was like the 60s, the 1960s in the U.S., we, a lot of women were having um, birthing issues because of low folic, low folate. And the government decided to have the, the grain companies, the bread, com bread companies, pasta companies, et cetera, put folic acid in their products. So they called it enriched. You've seen enriched bread, right? Mm hmm so yes. when they did that and they put in folic acid, folic acid is the cheapest form of vitamin B9, which is really folate. And folate comes from leafy green vegetables. And when you eat leafy green vegetables, your body converts them into B9. But you need a heck of a lot of leafy green vegetables, probably more than the average person is eating. So many people go around very low in B9, and then if they are poor methylators, mm. they eat enriched breads, pastas, cupcakes, cookies, whatever, cereals, you know, flatbreads, pizzas, bagels, with all this folic acid in them, which is basically poison to a poor methylator. It's mm. use, not only useless, it has negative impact on our bodies. And what's interesting about that is that you need methylated folate. You need methyl folate or 5-MTHF is another thing you'll see out in the world. And that's what you need to actually get the B9 into your system. So every time you eat a pretzel or a cupcake or cereal or a pizza, you're taking in poison. How are you going to get that stuff out of you? You're going to go into your sunlight and sauna and you're going to sweat it out from the inside out. You're going to get rid of it through the largest organ in your skin. And when you're detoxifying the things that not just the toxins, the heavy metals, the, the air, the water, the food that we eat and all of the environment we're living in, but also specifically some of these things that impact us 60% in a negative way. So netting it all out, hormones are only half the equation, a third of the equation. Mm -hmm. And the other third is your detoxification pathways mm -hmm. and taking methylated supplements and keeping your microbiome very good, pooping and peeing every day really well. If you don't get up, and I always say that the poops should slide out of you like a ballerina does a pirouette down the toilet. It should just be effortless. If there's any irritable bowel, constipation, you are full of toxins. So you're not getting everything moving. You've got to get it all moving. So your circulation, you've got to keep moving. Your bowels, you've got to keep moving. Moving is life. Moving is energy. Getting it out of our systems so that we're running free and flowing free is what's going to keep us healthy. And that's why saunas are the best defense for poor methylators. Well said. And I love that visual. <laughs> I love that. You know, uh, we always say sunlight is effortless wellness. I, wellness. I've never, oh, you do? Thought, I've never thought about the, 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 the poop ballerina. <laughs> so, so <laughs> That's, if that's, I'm going to talk about a turd, I might as well make put her in a tutu. <laughs> that's right. That's right. She's pretty in pink. I see her. <laughs> I, I love it. I love. I mean, I've learned so so much. I um. So okay. So so I still have some questions, but let's yeah. let's take a couple of the questions from that are already out there, and then we'll go back um, to more questions. So one of the questions um, 
is will regular sauna sessions help lower some of our environmental toxic load via sweat and lymph stimulation? Hey, that's Richard Olson, talk to me guy. He's uh, the uh, podcaster on Sound Health Radio. And uh, I absolutely love being on his show. Hello, Richard Olson, it's great to see you today. <laughs> Hi Richard, uh, well, thank you for joining us. Yeah, Connie, you answer that, you're the expert. Yeah, so um, absolutely, Richard. Part of the uh, mechanism you know, of, of action with the infrared wavelengths getting into your body, um, far infrared, mid infrared and near infrared is making a transformational change with your cells and activating as like Susan said, I loved, love, love when you used to talk about movement as energy, movement is life. It's so true. And it's the same thing with your body inside. Like you need to get movement in order to get, you know, the purging and the removal of the toxic load. And we have shown that um, with some light and gosh, we did a study with University of Missouri, Kansas City in 2005. So what is that, 16 years ago? And in that study, we showed a removal of arsenic from the body. Um, we have had people, when we first started our company to over 20 years ago, people would send us their blood work and they would show the difference between you know their bodies before using a sunlight and then and after. And some of the real specific easy things to measure for are the heavy metals such as mercury, lead, chemenium, aluminum, and showing the difference in high levels of, of um, before using a sunlight and, and then, you know, six weeks, some people, you know, faster, some people longer after using a sunlight session showing a significant reduction in all of those heavy metals. So absolutely it, it can, it can help and, and, and you should, you know, be using it because you just don't, like Susan said, you just, you don't even know what you're exposed to, right? Yeah. And um, so even if you're a great methylator and, and you're, you know, healthy, you're still exposed to things, you know, when you're eating and you're in the environment that you need to get moving out of your body so you, you can stay healthy. Because like getting back to the intimacy and the libido, I loved what you said of if you're tired, and you're you're you have a heavy toxic burden yeah it's not like i think so many times people think oh it's just me or it's because i'm aging or it's because i have kids or it's because they make all these excuses but reality is if you're healthy and you're light and when i say light meaning that you know i always feel after i use my my sauna after i come out of mine I, I'm lighter. I have more energy. And what, that's what's so different about some Lightens product than regular traditional saunas that are hot. Like you're drained after that. Like I feel I have more energy than ever before. And that zest, that, you know, feeling, that sensation, right, is great for, you know, the intimacy. And because and, you feel good. You feel good about yourself. You feel good. You know, you feel light. You feel like, I'm, you know, you have more energy. And when you have more energy, you can do more things, you know. Yep. So um, that was a long answer <laughs> to your question. Would you do you have anything else to add, Susan, as far as on um, his question? Well, I, I mean, one of the things that I don't necessarily like to do is things like liver detoxifications and cleanses and things like that. Mm -hmm. I'd rather everything I do is, you know, uh, I, I, I lubed my body up with mango, organic mango butter this morning. And I had uh, organic eggs and an organic salad for breakfast and organic oranges off of my tree. So what I try to do is the first line of defense is treat my body like I'm fueling it for life. Mm -hmm. One of the taglines of the 20, my supplement company is energy, vitality, and a lust for life. Because that's what I, I want people to feel. And that's what we want. We want to have the energy to do everything we want. And so I try to keep the toxic load going in low. And I try to use the right multivitamin, multimineral supplement for, for my needs, the, my methylated needs. Um, and then I use my sauna to basically keep me clean. That's my strategy is using a sauna to keep me clean. So mm -hmm. that's the other thing is that I think a lot of the ways that other people go about detoxing is pretty 
hard on the system. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, I like a nice red wine at night. I like mm -hmm. to have a glass of wine with my dinner. Mm -hmm. And so I don't want to do anything too hard on my liver. And I think a lot of the cleanses and detox things can be very difficult. Sometimes you have to do them and you have to use your bentonite clays and your bam charcoal bamboos and, you know, all of those, uh, you know, kind of chelators and, you know, maybe using the cyto detox clinoptilolites to get through the blood brain blood brain barrier to get the heavy metals out of your brain. You may have to do those things in addition. But for me, the simple, healthy thing is my sunlight and sauna. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I just say I'm so glad to be here today, Connie. I really am. Aww. I love my sauna and I love telling my customers and fans about it. I am a very, very happy influencer for you. Um, I really am. Yeah. And the quality of your products is incredible. I mean, you walk into the, su the sunlight and sauna and it smells so good. It's just a beaut. What's the wood that you use in there? Well, we have three different wood choices. Um, mm -hmm. There's some people that, that want like absolutely no fragrance whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a basswood, which is hypoallergenic and mm -hmm. um, fragrance free. And then we have the traditional cedar, um, which has a fragrance. And then we have uh, eucalyptus, which was, I mean, I guess oh. now it's probably been 10 years that we started, but it, for me, it still seems like newer, um, which is has the look of cedar. It has, it's a dark, like textured wood. And it doesn't, you would think intuitively because of the name eucalyptus, it would have a fragrance, but it doesn't. So for the people that want the look of cedar but don't want the fragrance of cedar eucalyptus meets that need and it's an excellent excellent wood choice um the basswood is a blonde wood so we have one blonde and two darker um woods um in I all have the, the cedar series. yeah the cedar the cedar it smells so good in there mm, i just that's one of my favorite parts of the whole sauna experience it's the fragrance the yeah oh, can i can I share my tips and tricks, my sauna tips and tricks? Yes, please. So one of the things that I have to watch out for because I'm not a natural blonde. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you're so surprised. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is so, I needed this so much today. Thank you so much for all these belly laughs. This is awesome. It's so good. I wrap, I tuck, I tuck my hair up in a little turban when I go into my sauna. Oh, okay. That's um, interesting. Just to keep, because um, I just noticed that, you know, when you, when you dye your hair, it can get a little dry. And um, so I, I pop my hair in a little turban just to protect it from the sauna experience. The other thing that I do is I have big pillows in my sauna. Mm -hmm. I like to lie down in there, but I like to prop up. So I have these wonderful big pillows and I just throw big beefy towels on them mm -hmm. and they are, it's so comfortable in there. I just lay on my towels and my pillows. And then I go in with my favorite bubbly mineral water, which is Topo Chico. Have you, have you tried Topo Chico Topo yet? Topo Chico, where did that come from? I, I'm a, I'm a water connoisseur. So you're, you're totally speaking my language right now. So tell me about Topo Chico. So Coca-Cola acquired them recently and they're a Mexican mineral water. I think it's uh, from down in Monterey, Mexico. And it is the most lovely tasting mineral water with the most perfect bubble. And uh, I just love it. But what I do is I put a cap full of this bio body bio e-light in. When I, you know, I was a long haul COVID person for the last 14 months. I got it really early uh, from a friend who was pre-symptomatic and it took me down. There were months I didn't get out of bed. And one of the things that I did was take these um, electrolytes to help move more. I had a lot of uh, neuro inflammation. I did a hyperbaric oxygen and I did my sunlight and sauna. And when I would go in my sauna, I would put a cap full of this in a big, big cup, a big plastic cup of the Topo Chico. And that really adds a lot of potassium. What is in this? Let me tell you what's in it. I, got, I buy it on Amazon and I just throw a cap full in there um, because it helps hydrate and give you more energy. And it has sodium potassium and magnesium in it. Mm -hmm. And it, it actually tastes very good. It's, you know, a little salty, I would mm -hmm. say from the sodium. 
And it's really good in the Topo Chico. So that's another one of my little tricks that I do in my sauna to, to stay hydrated while I'm in the infrared. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. That's awesome. Thank you so much. And oh, go ahead. I have a fantastic playlist. My friend, Dr. Judson Brandeis, he's a urologist. And we do a lot of men's sexual performance, you know, uh, videos together and things. And he runs a really nice urology office over in the East Bay. And he has a four hour playlist that he's created that is the most incredible playlist. And so we play that playlist in the sauna. So I've got Judd's playlist. I got my Topo Chico with my electrolytes. I've got my sauna hat. I've got my pillows. I've got my view of the redwoods. And I've got my gorgeous husband of 30 years in there with me. And we just talk about life and connect and have a great time. And it's so much fun. So I, I, I derive so much joy out of both enjoying my sunlight and sauna and helping other people, encouraging other people to bring one into their homes. Um, especially now during the pandemic, it's like a little event you can do that's so nice and so healthy. <laughs> it is. It's, it's like creating your own, you know, spotcation. Yeah. Um, <laughs> at home. So I completely, I mean, it's, and it's so really so important. I mean, even taking the, the quote unquote luxury thought out of it. I mean, really it's, it's something that we should do daily, you know, for our body. So uh, I want to make sure I get to these questions before we run out of time. So um, there's another question that says, is there a recommended amount of B, of B vitamin we should be getting daily? Well, you know, there's the US, R, the, the RDA recommended daily allowance of B vitamins, and you can look that up on the government website. But what I found is that I need more than that. So mm. I take my I take my desire supplements. So you can get these on the 20 if you're a poor methylator. These are the ones for you. They have libido botanicals built right in. So it's like a, a one a day with a little something more. <laughs> libido botanicals. Um, these are the ones that are the ancestral wisdom that also have clinical research behind them. And I love my desire daily vitamin, but I also take an additional B complex, a methylated B complex on top of it, because my body is just hungry for the B complex, just hungry for it. I've even at times in my life given myself injections of methylcobalamin B12. It's a bright red liquid. And I, during my COVID long haul, I was injecting myself with 50,000 IUs of vitamin D a week. And I don't remember how much B12 for me, but it doesn't matter for me. You, you've got to find your own way, mm -hmm. but you can supplement incremental B vitamins and you'll feel better. And then you'll be like, Ooh, I hit my limit and that's enough. Mm -hmm. And vitamin B2, which is the riboflavin, which is very, very important for the Krebs cycle and cellular energy and methylation, that's the one that turns your pee bright yellow. So you'll see when you're starting to get enough of B2 that you'll see it in your urine. It'll be very bright. That's very, very helpful. Um, and was it Richard said that B vitamins are water soluble, therefore they want to be taken daily. So thank you for that additional yes. um information. And then somebody asked, I think it was Kendra that asked about which test to that we recommend or that Susan recommends if you are, if you think you're a poor methylator, we did talk about this early on, right? And, um, you know, your recommendation was to G Google. HFR. Right. MTHFR gene. Yep. And test. homocysteine levels, and homocysteine. which you get with a basic blood test. Right. So, um, you can Google that and find out and you can get tested. If you don't want to get tested, um, then you can um, enhance like your nutrition with great leafy greens, yep. with lots of B vitamins. You have a, you have your own supplement. What was the name of that supplement that you recommend? Desire. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So you can take your desire um, to make sure you're having, you know, you have enough of the supplements needed to detoxify. And then, of course, spend time in your sunlight and sauna detoxifying your body, giving you that increased energy. Um, and did I miss anything as far as I'm, I'm just thinking as I'm a, like a logical kind of thinker. It's like you find out, you know, if you have that, if you're a poor meth later, even if you're not, you know, you still 
want to make sure that you're you know having enough b vitamins that you're having the desired um supplement that you're taking the steps to detoxify that you're increasing your um, nitric oxide and through sauna sessions and and increasing your libido and therefore hopefully increasing your intimacy and um increasing your you know passion in 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 your life uh did i miss anything i think you got it connie zach oh only because you're a great teacher <laughs> <laughs> i really um i appreciate all of the questions i do want to mention before i forget that um, in honor of our time with Susan today, we do have a special offer. So any bill that I've received notes from people saying that they already have their sauna and they love it um, and all of their tips. So thank you so much for all of your support. If you don't have yours yet and you um, and you would like to go ahead and get one, uh, we do have a special offer and discount that we're offering um, in honor of Susan. Make sure, make sure, make sure and mention Susan Bratton's name. And if we, do we have a special code? If we have a special code, we'll put it in chat. Just a name, just a name, Susan, Brat Susan Bratton. So just mention Susan Bratton and you will get the discount. Um, and we put in the chats, Susan's free gifts. And anything else that you would like to make sure and mention what, so what what's ahead for you coming up? Like anything you wanna like let us know about? Well, in 2021? I'll be at the Upgrade Labs um, yeah. event in Orlando in October, for my first live appearance. I bet I'll see you there. Yeah. And um, I wanted to let you know that I christened the first sunlight and sauna in Australia, <laughs> in Byron Bay, in a spa. I was the very first person to go into the sunlight and sauna in, I forget what the name of the spa was in Byron Bay, but I was like, oh, I was so proud of myself. I was That's like, how could I come all the way to Australia and find and get, be, be the first butt in the seat? <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome what a great story that's awesome i love it i love it i would, I would well, like next time you're like take a picture i want to you know it would be a great i think i have pictures i can send them to you oh my god i would love that sure. that would be fantastic yeah, of course yeah. i took a selfie in my sunlight and sauna in yay. byron bay <laughs> yay god that just sounds amazing being in byron bay like it's uh, gorgeous there yeah yeah beautiful. yeah so sunlight and around the world in every home that's right. That's right. So, so you're coming, you're going to go to upgrade labs. Yep. Um, anything, any other initiatives that you have, um, working on that we need to know about? I am working on some secret things that I can't tell you too much okay. about yet, but, uh, I've got some new products launching this year. So, uh, yeah, things well, we are in the pipe. I've got the pipeline filled with That's good, good goodies. Good goodies. Well, we will stay tuned. And when you're ready to share, we want to help um, help let everybody know. So I appreciate Thanks, your man. time today. I appreciate your questions from everybody. And those, if, uh, just as always, if you continue, lots of times when people watch this later, they'll have questions, you can post it. We will update yeah. with answers online. You can also reach out directly to our Sunlight and team and we'll make sure you get all of your, and this is a big, big, important topic. And we want everybody to live their best life. I mean, our mission at Sunlighten is to bring light, hope, and happiness to people everywhere so they can live their best life. And part of living your best life is having a happy, passionate relationship with somebody and, um, you know, enjoying each other at the fullest level. So, and it sounds like you and Tim, and I got, I had the pleasure, I got to meet Tim at one of our unicorn clubs and where he got to talk about what it's like to be married to a wonderful strong woman I forgot about remember that. i love that because i mean it's it's not you know it, you know like i have an amazing amazing husband who's also my business partner and he's also you know married to a woman who is very um you know i just i have my opinion and i have you know i i i am I'm forthright and it's sometimes not easy and so i i'm gonna never forget that i always thought it was amazing I, I totally yeah. forgot about that. That was so sweet. Yeah. We were at a woman's CEO event and they put our husbands on the stage and asked them how they, how they dealt with us. I know. <laughs> and I they were all it. like, we, I love her. She's the perfect one for me. And I was like, Oh God, thank God we found our unicorns, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was great. I will never forget it. And, and you could, again, you could just like at the beginning of this conversation, you could tell that they were so genuine and so real and so authentic and such a good match. And, you know, their mission is to lift you up and to have your light shine brighter 
And that's my goal in my life with my husband is however I can help, you know, bring his, um, you know, superpowers to light and have them shine brighter than, then that's how I feel like, you know, what I'm, I'm supposed to do. So yay. yay! This was awesome, Susan. This time went so Thank fast. Uh, again, sorry for the technical difficulties at the beginning. Uh, for those of you who missed some that you can watch it again. And um, Susan and Sun Lighten are here to answer all of your questions and to have you live a wonderful, passionate life. Yes. So thank you all. Thank you, Susan. Don't forget to mention okay. Susan Bratton. <laughs> Thanks for everything. Have a great day, everyone. Mwah, 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 mwah. <laughs>